Ah, good morning, hello folks, how are you? We've got a good one for you today. This is the Hoof GP, and this is what's happening in today's video. Make sure you subscribe so that you get updates for videos just like this. On this very typically Scottish day, we're investigating soul ulcers. We visit a routine farm and we jump all the way south of the border to Somerset to visit some extremely sexy and well looked after Holstein cattle. This is the Hoof GP. It is a seriously horrible day outside. Luckily we're inside though, but I've got a feeling that wind is gonna pierce all open avenues and be a cold one. We're on our way to a regular farm to trim probably around 25 cows, fix some problems, and then we're headed somewhere pretty special. Anyway, let's brave this weather. You'll see what I mean. I sound like I'm being soft, but things are about to get wild. Nice try, <sighs> Have I ever shown you my trainers before? Look at this. How cool is that? These bib and braces, by the way, are useless. They cost a fortune. They retain water like a sponge. And they're just useless. Never buy them, ever. Right. Lights off. Oh. Right, into the Mitsubishi and away we go. Hey, now look into my eyes. You can use them as a mirror, baby. You're my ticket to paradise. Hey, now everything's all right. We've been longing for each other. Just like that, we're at the farm. Right now, me and Craig are still getting to grips with the KVK. Using new equipment like this takes time. We need to learn the ropes, and we are getting there. Although Craig's having a little trouble with that hook. Unloading the KVK may look a little fussy, but in reality, all we do is unstrap it, add on four wheels, and wheel it off. It really doesn't take long at all. So we visit this farm every second week and the main objective is to avoid sole ulceration through good routine hoof trimming. It is cold. Maybe the temperature's not that cold, but it's the kind of cold that gets right into you. Does that make sense? Looking sharp. Beautiful. The radio working, mate. Radio? Who needs a radio? Ready, Graham? Mark, yeah, in, yeah. Positions are available. Apply for the job in the comments below. Come on. Right, folks, let's talk turkey. Routine cattle hoof trimming. What is the point and what is the objective? Well, Funnily enough, cows are not supposed to be housed on concrete, so it's our jobs as their owners and carers to do everything we possibly can to keep them as comfortable as we possibly can. Concrete is inherently bad for cows' feet, but we can do something about it, and we can make sure these cows don't end up with sole ulcers. And that is the point of routine cattle hoof trimming. Because of these unnatural environments and the nutrition we feed the cows, their feet don't wear and don't grow as they naturally would in the wild. So it's our job to make sure we distribute their weight evenly between the two digits and make sure that their hoof capsule is at the right angle. 
By doing these two easy and simple things, we can completely eliminate sole ulceration. But sole ulceration is the climax of bruising on the sole. And that's actually something that is much more difficult to eliminate through routine trimming alone. And that is where a good environment comes in handy. That is sole bruising. And in a moment, we're gonna show you what a real sole ulcer looks like. Now you've seen that before, but we're also gonna show you the systems we can use to stop from getting them completely. You see, if we come down here, that angle shows how much pressure we're taking off that beetle bone. Anyway, on with the cows. And just like that, the next cow has a sole ulcer on her front left foot. I say she has a sole ulcer, I'm not exactly sure, but that looks suspicious. And she is lame on this foot, so let's fix her. Sole ulcers used to be the problem. They were the most common problem that I would come across, and any of the farms that I have visited in the past used to say the same thing. But because of the determination of farmers right across the world and their investment in time and money, these are reducing on a daily basis. Oh, look, there's going to be a big ulcer right up in there. Actually, before we finish this ulcer, let me show you exactly what you can do to prevent these from happening in the first place. If I just jump, I should end up with some clean boots and different ground. <sighs> and just like that, we've landed at Bynum City Farms here to look at environments. Sounds boring, doesn't it? Promise you it's not though. That ulcer and white line are directly attributed. <laughs> Easy for me to say. That ulcer and white line situation we've just seen are directly attributed to the environments in which cows live and are handled in. And things like this matting from EasyFix help solve that. Not only does it help solve it though, it makes farmers' lives much more easy. You see, cows are supposed to be on soft ground. The soles of their feet are supposed to be able to flex so that that pedal bone can flex and be allowed to move within the hoof capsule and sink into the ground. The hoof wall, so the hard bit round about the edge of their feet, doesn't flex. So basically, you've got this situation where the bottom of their foot is going like this. Now, if it can't do that because of concrete, something has got to give. And that something is the corium, and that is why bruising and sole ulceration happens. This rubber allows the sole of the foot to flex. And because it flexes, it means the corium isn't taking all that abuse. It's being allowed to breathe. It's being allowed to flex, and it's allowing the pedal bone to sink into it. The corium's not getting squished, and it's not being made to bleed every single step. Bynum City Farm has got hard concrete down there. And up here, there's soft, nice, flexible rubber from EasyFix. And that allows the cows, no, it doesn't allow them, it encourages them forward because they like standing on this rubber. It also means the farmer's job is easier because he doesn't need to keep going and getting the cows because they want to come forward. Then, when they're in this parlour, they stand much more still because that corium isn't being squeezed between the hard pedal bone and the concrete. It's being allowed to flex. The sole is flexing and allowing the pedal bone to sink down into the rubber. Obviously, it's not completely sinking in the rubber. It's allowing the sole to flex. Look, they've even got rubber here on the exit lane down to the foot baths. Might seem like a little thing, but all these little things add up to a big thing. And that is good feet. Bynum City Farm have also invested in a new shed and it's awesome. I'll show you in a minute. This is their heifer shed. We'll look at it first. This is obviously where the young stock live, 
and they're separated from the rest of the herd because they're not as strong-willed. They're not as dominant as some of the other characters within the main herd. And this can be a problem because cows, believe it or not, bully the weaker ones. These cows are obviously very, very healthy indeed, but as you're just about to see, their older and more productive counterparts are living the bovine dream by comparison. Splitting the cows into three groups is really, really clever. It stops the more dominant cows within the herd bullying the smaller cows, so everybody gets their fair share of the ration and the best spots to lie in. Which all, believe it or not, adds up to better feet. This shed has lower yielding cows in, so they're not heifers, but they're the lower yielding cows within the herd. And that means they're getting a slightly different nutritional diet to the high yielders, which we're just about to see in the fancy new shed. Look at the difference in this shed compared to the last shed at the feed fence. These are easy fix head rails or neck rails or feed fences, whatever you want to call them. That was a bird scare or not a gunshot. Look how free the cows are. If we look at the last shed, the cows' necks, the back of their heads was rubbing on that feed fence. And that's really irritating for the cows. Also, the cows next to each other can jostle for position and push one another out of the way. They can't do that in this feed fence because they're all individual. Once a cow's got her spot, she's got her spot and nobody's moving her. They've also got the freedom to lift their heads up and down as much as they possibly want so they can stand up completely straight without any hindrance or annoyance. You see, just like humans, cows are all different sizes. Some are high, some are low, some are fat, some are thin. Not, not me. And that's why it's important to have as much versatility as possible. And these head rails give you that. They also make it easier for me to get through. This is one of Bynum City Farm's older sheds. And that's why they've still got the harsh steel ring cubicles in here. But we're just about to see why the easy fix ones are more comfortable. Stick around. If you look at this cow here, look, she's leaning against that steel cubicle. The only give is in her hide, her skeleton, her flesh. That's the only give that is there. The cubicle's not moving for her. Whereas if we look at this cow behind us, the cubicle's flexing out of her way. And that means that she is as comfortable as possible. And this is the high cow's shed. This is luxury, guys. If you're a cow, this is the shed you want to stay in. These cows are on soft Neptune matting. There's rubber here and there's foam underneath it. Then it's topped off with beautiful fresh straw. You can't tell me she doesn't look comfortable. The passageways here are grooved with track right grooving. And it's got really nice sharp edges, which sounds bad and harsh. But these sharp edges are key to making the cows feel like they've got all the confidence in the world and they're not gonna slip. Which also, believe it or not, helps with white line problems. Why though? Well, if cows slip and slide, they'll bash their feet into hard concrete edges. That'll create bruising behind the hoof wall and eventually forms an abscess because the hoof wall doesn't flex. So having track right grooving like this in situ really, really helps to reduce white line problems, abscesses in particular. These head rails, they, believe it or not, are helping the front feet avoid becoming lame. You see how that cow there, she's leaning forward to eat her silage and her feet are nice and straight. She's not having to really reach in and that stops corkscrew claw from happening, which again can lead to white line problems. You can clearly see the cows here are happy and healthy and producing lots of good nutritious milk. And that's because the environment here is really, really good. These cubicles, the mats, the head rails, and the grooving on the floors are all adding up to make one huge difference here at Bynum Farm. And when it comes to the parlor, that rubber flooring is making them much more comfortable when they're getting milked. All this straw really helps to keep the cows clean as well. They like to eat it as well. Plus their forage or their TMR, total mix ration, what they're eating at the feed fence right now really helps to keep their stools slurry or whatever it is you want to call it, thick and healthy. It may be a topic of conversation, but stools or slurry in a cow and their composition, their um, viscosity are really important. The more wet or moist or liquid-like their stools or slurry are, the more it slashes up and makes them dirty. I'm only thinking about feet here, by the way. 
the more dirt there is around about, the more dermatitis there is likely to be on the farm. Here, it's nice and thick. So the cows are cleaner and they have less dermatitis. Anyway, let's get back to that ulcer. So that pedal bone hasn't been getting enough rest. It's caused this ulceration or bruising or blisteration or whatever you want to call it to burst right through her soul. And it's causing serious pain. There just now. As soon as I start cutting, you know, I'm trying to lift the horn away. I'm not trying to carve right into the foot. As soon as I get a bit of bite, I try to flick that bit away, and that way the blade doesn't go too deep. Or at least that's the idea. So how is everybody? I haven't asked you that in a while. Are we all looking forward to Christmas? I am. I'm like a child. So we've actually caught this ulcer just at a good time. It's just really starting to break through the hoof horn. And we're lowering this heel to take the weight off this claw, which is what we always do. But I don't always mention it. I talk about the block taking the weight off, but actually we can do it just through trimming alone, if we have enough heel height on this outer claw. Which I think we do. Just clean up the heels, that's step five. A little spray of water, so you can see what it looks like now. That's a really pretty trim. I'm not just saying that for the camera. Well, I am saying that for the camera. But actually, when I do a trim like this, I'm like, yes, we did good. So here is the ulcer site. It's only a very slight one, but look, if we go around here, you can clearly see all of the weight is now going to be on this claw, meaning this is a chance to heal. This cow will not need a block. We've managed to get enough height difference between the two claws to completely alleviate our pain and allow the healing process to begin. You are welcome. Must taste good. It's a little bit slippy, but she genuinely is not limping anymore. Right, on with the cows. We can run, run away. You and me together, baby, we don't gotta stay. Let's lose, lose our minds. We could go crazy and leave it all behind. It could be glorious, glorious. And with that folks, it brings us to the end of this video and the end of hopefully a good lesson in soul ulceration and how you can avoid it with your cows. Even if you live in the inner city because obviously a lot of people in the inner city, especially in Northern America, have cows inside their uh, apartments, don't they? Yeah, this probably hasn't been that much use to people like you. Anyway, with that said, love ya, bye.